are in one of the most amazing buildings I've ever been in. And it pales in comparison with how beautiful you are today. So. And you look okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I've known these two for a while. I've known Becky for quite a while. Um, I remember first meeting you about eight years ago at EWU, and you were working up in the activities building, and you were also uh, working at Denny's, which was the family business, um, <laughs> which is a grocery store there in Medical Lake. And over time, I've been so blessed to see your character just uh, grow and really see the amazing woman that you are, uh, the kind, caring, compassionate person you are, sweet, funny. Um, you are truly an amazing person because you love meat and cheese and bread more than anything else. <laughs> and I love that. I think that's such a neat quality to have. Um, but you truly are God. You are God's miracle. That he's been prepping you for today to be with the man of your dreams, Matt, here. And uh, I know that you made quite the first impression on him a long time ago. So. Matt, I remember first meeting you. It was right after, I believe, the, the Susan Coleman race. And I saw this guy, and he kind of looked like a hipster Where's Waldo character. <laughs> Had a big old poofy hat, and big old beard, and tight pants. And, uh, and I thought, man, Becky, she, she's looking a little bit longer than she, you know, most people would hold eye contact. Uh, you know, I, I pulled Denise aside. I said, what's the deal with this guy? And, uh, she said, I don't know. There's, there's something about him. There's something about him. I, I think he might be the, be the one for her. And, you know, she was a wonderful predictor there. Um, Matt, seeing, seeing you over time as I've gotten to know you guys better, seeing the, the patient, measured, honorable man that you are, the fun guy that you are, Seeing how well you take care of Becky, Rebecca, that, <laughs> and seeing how well you take care of her, I know that as you guys go forward in your life, you will do such an amazing job of being the man that she truly deserves to have lead her. I have some advice for you guys. The, there's, there's three kind of critical pieces of advice that I feel will really help you in your marriage. One, it is of the utmost importance that you feed your wife. <laughs> feed her because as a fellow member of the Cranky Pants Party, when we don't eat, I know that that would be a big assurance to a wonderful life together with you two. You've heard the phrase, uh, happy wife, happy life. Um, my, my wife has the same thing for me. Uh, it's, Hungry husband, uncomfortable, angry car ride. Which doesn't really rhyme, but you get the, uh, you know, the, the advice that goes through it. Um, funny story, I, I believe you guys remember that such an instance came up. There was a little trip to Glacier Park, Glacier National Park, where the car was on fire, the engine was on fire, and you guys were stuck, and there were no snacks. Please, remember, pack snacks. They'll make your life so much better. Really, remember to always work for your marriage. That is something that no, no two people will stay completely linear over time. And I really believe that the Bible calls us to continually pursue that fire that we have. In the Song of Songs, verse, chapter 8, verse 6 and 7, it says, Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. That right now you guys feel a tremendous amount of love and passion. Work to keep that fire stoked. Read books. Take time each day. Spend time to, to, to enjoy just each other's company. Take a little bit of time. Leave the iPhones back, uh, you know, back in the other room and just enjoy it. Study your wife. Study your husband. Find out what encourages them. What makes them unbelievably happy and continue to pursue it. Because I know that it will lead to such an amazing marriage. 
and also be each other's best friend. That so far you guys have done a great job in that. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. How can one keep warm alone? The one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You guys have been given an amazing gift of marriage by God. And that it serves an amazing purpose. That you two are now stronger than anything you could ever be together. Your strengths will build each other's strengths. Your strengths will fill each other's weaknesses. Life is going to throw its best at you, but you guys are going to take each other's burdens. And that's so exciting because you guys have amazing partnership together. People will come and go. Friends will you know, move on or you'll move to different places, but you two will be each other's best friend forever. Rebecca gave me a poem that she, loved, she feels really represents their relationship. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I'm never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true. And it's you. You are whatever a moon has always meant, and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here's the deepest secret nobody knows. Here's the root of the root and the bud of the bud, and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. Let's pray. Father, we come before you so grateful, so happy, so overjoyed to be here to celebrate the matrimony of Rebecca and Matt. God, you are an amazing God that has paired these two people together. Their love is so apparent. God, I know that you have a plan to shower blessings upon them, that you have an amazing plan for their life, that you have a future marked out for them that they can't even dream about. God, we pray that you just continue to guide them, that they can lean on you, that they can trust in you, that they can lean on each other, God, and that they can continue to build each other up and grow deeper and higher and stronger in their love for both you and themselves, God. God, we love you and we are so grateful. Please be with the rest of the ceremony, be with the rest of this reception, and God, please be with this marriage. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. It's so time for the vows. Rebecca, you will start. Dearest man, Dear I love you. I promise to always love you. I promise to never take you for granted and to be the reassurer that gray hair is always sexy. I promise to hug you when you are down. And to be your midnight kiss for every New Year's Eve for the rest of our lives. I promise to love you. Even when we don't like each other very much. I promise to never expect you to change. And I would never want you to. I promise to be faithful to you for all of our days. To love you, to support you, and to never forget that you are my hero, my best friend, and truly my better half. I love you. Matt. I choose you, Rebecca, to be my wife, companion, and best friend. I will love you for better or for worse, for rich or for poor, through sickness and health. I vow to switch inputs on the TV when you would like to watch a movie.
I vow to switch it back when you would like to watch TV. <laughs> I promise to always make you smile. To be the man you need, the man you deserve, and the man you've helped me to become. I vow to love you today, tomorrow, and forever. You made it through. All right. Hey, now's the time for the exchange of the ring. Do you have rings? <laughs> the wedding ring is a symbol of eternity. It's an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites two hearts and moves love. It's circular because it's infinite. And now as a token of your love, and of your deep desire to be forever united in heart and soul, you now place a ring on the finger of your right. Oh, oh, there you go. Joe, can you, can you pass forward the ring? Perfect. Sorry, they found me on a Craigslist. <laughs>